Hi Sagittarius, this is Morgan with Compass Rose Astrology. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is your January 2023 tarot and astrological reading where we're going to go through some of the astrological transits that you're going to be experiencing this month and we'll pair it with some of oops, sorry, <laughs> some of the tarot uh, cards, do a tarot card reading and um, pull some oracle cards for you afterwards. Um, this is a general reading, so this might not resonate with everybody, um, but uh, please take take what resonates and leave what doesn't, and let's just kind of jump right into the astrological transits this month. So you're going to have a lot of um, kind of energies <laughs> and transits happening, obviously, in your second house, the so, um, Capricorn. It is the house that is housing the Sun, Pluto, and Mercury this month, and Mercury is going to be going direct after going retrograde for a few weeks, and it's going to be continuously aspecting Uranus and Taurus and kind of hitting that um, transit a couple of times, which um, is in your sixth house. So there's going to be some themes along the lines of um, maybe some assets in your life, um, your business, kind of your skill sets, and maybe how they relate to, to people that um, that kind of respond to you at work or um, in your kind of day-to-day -day life that so you might have a little more say over um, some of the work happening in your lives. Um, so, and you have a lot of, most of your transits are actually happening um, in the first six houses, which is all underneath the horizon. So I think a lot of the things you're going to be experiencing this month are very, like, internal, very personal, um, and less relating to people, um, outside of you, except for this fun Mars transit that's happening in your seventh house. If we get some cards that are more, like, fire-oriented, um, we'll definitely look at... Mars in your seventh house, which is also going retrograde and will be going direct this month. So I feel like that's going to be kind of like triggering a few themes along the lines of relationships, partnerships, um, people that you have a sort of like connection with basically. Um, so yes, let's just jump right in. I have this little kind of rose and sage bundle to help clear the space and I'm also going to be using my um, space clearing candle that I made for um, these readings to bring in kind of intentions from spirit of um, clear messages, positive guidance, and purpose and reason for my readings. So thank you so much Scorpio uh, for tuning in. Thank you so much Spirit for providing great clear um, positive, compassionate messages for Scorpio that are, provide a clear path forward. Uh, perfect. Thank you so much. And let's get into this. So I'm going to be using the Heaven and Earth Tarot deck. And right off the bat, we got some cards for you. Okay, let's see. This actually came out first, so... Let's see, I'll put them down here for you. Okay, so these are pretty strong cards right off the bat. Let me, let me just take a look. Yeah, this is, this is amazing. <laughs> this is amazing, Sagittarius. Oh my gosh, I called you Scorpio earlier, didn't I? Hmm. I wonder if you have some <laughs> fun, um, Scorpio pla uh, placements in your, um, in your birth chart, this might really be kind of a specific reading for people with strong Scorpio placements or if um, you're a Scorpio moon or something. But um, this is a wonderful set of cards for you, Sagittarius. And I think this is definitely going to be pointing to your second house because these are all cards that relate to kind of um, material success. And that is very much ruled by the second house. So first we start off with the Empress card. This is the kind of the divine feminine card. I love this card. She's, she is 
this is how you're kind of presenting yourself and how you're feeling right now, Sagittarius. Basically, you have reached some point in your life where you feel not only are you kind of finding your path and finding your the right work for you, but you're also really coming into your own and honing in on your intuition and being not only a good person to yourself, but also to the people around you. The Empress is definitely the card of, um, I believe this is the Taurus card, so it's typically ruled by Venus, which is happening in your third house. Um, so this could be that there's um, a little bit of um, something happening along the lines of with um, your siblings, maybe or um, neighbors or any people that actually like feel like family to you, they could have kind of been a big part of um, you rising up to this this point in your life uh, where you feel like you you own your own life, you own yourself, you're you're very strong and independent, and um, you found a sort of like great balance for yourself here in your life. Um, this it could even be like a found family, um, especially getting this kind of material work um, card, but this is a, a card of community. So I'm wondering if like maybe you have this like group of people around you that have really allowed you to kind of thrive and become the person that you've always wanted to become. And it's also allowed you to find your path in terms of um, monetary success, which is really incredible for you, um, Sagittarius. This is also the card of possibly, um, or there, what I'm also picking up with this card is that you could be, um, teaching people things. You could be, um, acting as a sort of mentor, especially with this Empress card, that, um, people are really looking up to you and really taking, um, taking inspiration from you. You're a very inspirational person, Sagittarius, and it's really just due to finding, following your own path and having no fear about it. Um, very, very unique kind of a soul that you have, and it's truly, like, bringing you to the point of absolute material success here, especially with this material happiness card. It's the Nine of Cups, and this is the card of, um, independence, self-sufficiency. It's about abundance and uh, I would say a little dash of luck. I think that's a big part of Sagittarius, especially when you're ruled by Jupiter. Um, there is just this sense of kind of overall wisdom and um, cunning and understanding, but not kind of big head headedness here. So people are just really looking to you because they believe in you and they believe in the path that you've taken and they've seen how successful you've been. And this is has been a huge turning point, I think, for you recently, Sagittarius. So let's get some more cards. This is an amazing start for you. Let's see. Can we pull some more cards for Sagittarius? Awesome cards. Let's see. Let's get a clarification. Okay. Oh, wow. This is amazing. Oh my gosh. Okay. So Sagittarius, <laughs> you've got two more, three more, excuse me, major arcana cards in addition to this Empress that you had at the beginning. And this is incredible. You go from the Nine of Cups to the Ten of Cups, which is perfect success. Like, you're really on the right path here. Um, I think you're a very creative and emotionally intuitive person, especially with all these cups here. And um, a lot of the water in the background, because you're definitely, like, turning up as this Empress. Like, this is you in your own right, in your, in your absolute um, embodiment of who you are and what you're meant to do in your life. Um, and you're really coming into your own... And I don't, I, I keep saying that you're very independent and that you are, but I really think that you have earned this 
um, all on your own, but you're not alone, which is really incredible, especially because we do have this Ten of Cups card and it has um, a partnership on it. So whether this has already happened for you or this is your goal and this is what you're working towards, there's this kind of turning point in how you earn your money that is absolutely leading you towards this kind of karmic balancing. Like maybe you haven't had this kind of success or this luck or this passion in quite some time and you it's it's coming to you now it, like the world is balancing out you are getting what is due the hard work that you've put into your life so far and um maybe this was maybe things weren't so balanced for a long time and you're coming into your own and i think partially part of like what you're also experiencing at the, at the same time is that there's another partnership that you have and i really do think it's romantic especially with this lover's card um there's somebody that's helping build you up, especially with um, having this Empress and the Emperor card here with the Lover's card. Um, like, the, your divine partnership. Whether you found them or not, this could be someone coming into your life. But not only are they going to help you in your financial success, but they're also going to have, like, material su success. But they're also going to help you in your emotional kind of support and abundance here. This is like... <laughs> This is like a dream reading, Sagittarius. I'm so surprised and so pleased. Um, and let's see, especially with the Emperor turning up here, another reason why I do think this is a um, divinely orchestrated kind of partnership for you is because um, the Emperor is the um, s symbolic of uh, the Aries sign, and that's ruled by Mars, which is in your seventh house. So there's definitely something happening within your seventh house of partnerships and relationships that is allowing you to thrive and kind of flourish here. Um, let's, let's see if there's anything else that Spirit wants to say to you because this is really a beautiful reading. Let me see, like maybe what is it that's inspiring you? Like what kind of path is this? My goodness, Sagittarius, how is this even possible? This is a complete divine like path for you oh my gosh so you have the magician the star and the sun <laughs> like i can't even make this up you have seven major arcanas in like a 10 card spread this is crazy um so anyway with the magician this is the number one card um in the deck and this is incredible beginnings this is having everything in your arsenal that you need to start this path and i really think that um maybe um what i was saying about how like you've you've had maybe a difficult kind of time getting to this point maybe you've been yearning for this this goal this dream of yours especially with the star card like this is a complete dream that you've had since you were um maybe a kid just like in in just an essence of of what it stands for like maybe the kind of success that you're looking for kind of freedom kind of um creativity it's that kind of success but basically all the things that you've done in your past have led to this moment to allow you to use all of the tools that you've gathered in your lifetime like whether it was a a bunch of different jobs or a bunch of different hobbies it could be um just a a lot of skill sets that you gathered from different um, experiences in your past have are finally coming together and allowing you to um, make your dreams happen. And that's that's essentially what the star card is. It's um, not only putting out what you get or getting back what you put out. So like you you understand that in life, um, sometimes you have to earn things. Um, and this is like divinely earned, you know, like you've put out all the energy, ambition, um, perseverance, especially to get to this point in your life. And it's going to bring you ultimate happiness. It's also going to make you kind of like, um, um, I, I feel like a public figure, like your 10th house is not lit, lit up here. Um, but I, since your 10th house is Virgo and Mercury is going to be going direct, I really think this is something that's going to be, and Virgo is um, ruled by Mercury, 
I really think this is, and it's in um, Mercury's with the Sun, and it rules, obviously, the Sun card. Um, I feel like this could be that you're going to be kind of in a public eye. Um, people are going to be looking up to you, going to be watching you. This could be something that's really about your core, about your who you are and your essence. And it allows you to be kind of in the public eye a little bit, but it's, it is going to bring ultimate happiness. And I think what I was saying before about this being like a dream, some sort of um, feeling that you've been looking for since you were little, um, with this child on the horse's back, I really think this is something that really speaks to you on kind of like a a soul level. And that's amazing. That's amazing. That's so good. Um, and I, I just was called to kind of look at the bottom of the deck. Another major arcana for you, and it is the devil, but the, what I'm getting from this is that you're freeing some chains that have bound you previously. Like, you're, you're moving away. I think maybe you were realizing that there was something that was binding you to this previous path um, that was, like, that wasn't good for you. It wasn't exactly what your soul needed. And so now you are, you are freeing yourself. Like, like these people under the, um, the devil in this card, they can get free. They're just allowing themselves to stay shackled to these, um, this is maybe societal kind of bindings, but you're allowing yourself to get free. Awesome. So, okay. So we're going to take an Oracle card from this Winter Seer Animal Companion deck. It's wild. Okay. Spirit has a lot to say to you today knows exactly what they want to say to you. <laughs> so um, these, I like to read from the um, deck, the deck book, um, because the author of this deck and guidebook uh, pulls from Celtic and Norse mythology, and I really, really enjoy kind of the stories they enter, they weave with these cards. And so Salamander, we have fire, and so just to kind of reiterate, you do have um, Aries, and you are a fire sign, Sag, so, um, and you're ruled by Jupiter, which is hanging out over in the fifth house, so this could be really something that brings this, like, creative fire to you, um, that allows you to put something out into the world, um, yeah, I really think this is kind of, like, a more emotionally, um, productive thing, I, um, it could be any sort of medium, but it could be something that just, like, really speaks to your soul. Um, but anyway, so the Salamander card, the Fire card, the book says in a reading, the Salamander is a potent symbol of fire and its power to comfort, heat, transform, and destroy. In farm fields as well as in forests, fire cleanses and restores nutrients to the earth. This in turn increases the productivity of the soil and makes way for new and better growth. This can be a useful metaphor to remember when you are in the midst of difficulty. At times our tribulations may seem more than we are able to bear, but if we trust the flames and pass through them, we have the opportunity for enormous growth and renewal. Embracing the spirit of the salamander is to connect with the fire in yourself, to live with enthusiasm and passion. Are you claiming the full share of your personal power? If not, what is holding you back? If you have suffered loss or have started out in a position of disadvantage that feels insurmountable, don't despair. Remember the little salamander who can carry on and restore itself, even from the most grievous injury. Instead of focusing on what you lack, find ways to transform your pain into growth. Welcome the fire of competition, ambition, passion. Welcome the pain of the flames and then shake off the ashes and rise. I love that. <laughs> That's such a great reading. Um... Yeah, so let me know if um, this resonates, if you have anything astrologically happening for you this month if that might resonate with what we were talking about. And if you have any stories to share, I would absolutely love to hear them. Uh, feel free to watch any other of the videos that I put up this month that might resonate with if whether Sagittarius is your sun, moon, or rising sign, you can, like, look at those other videos that I put up, and they, they might resonate in a certain way that might be a little more, um, um, in line with what's activated in your chart, so feel free to check those out, and I will 
see you in the next video. I really look forward to talking to you next time. Okay, bye.